Before I introduce you to the instructor, I will begin with some background on the Institute. The Sikh Research Institute's mission is to provide educational resources to Sikhs to lead a guru-inspired life. As a global nonprofit organization, we produce original online courses, research papers, videos, podcasts, events, and books to create the largest go-to source of Sikh knowledge online. Today's class is a part of a live series, Anand Sahib, Way to Bliss. Anand Sahib holds a very special place in Sikh tradition as it is sung in almost every congregational setup. Revealed to Guru Amar Das Sahib, the Bani essentially details the human quest for bliss and the lifestyle that is necessary for leading a blissful life. The beauty and significance of Anand Sahib can be gauged from the fact that it dwells on a variety of ideas and principles that are central to Sikh thought. This class will begin with a 40 minute lecture followed by 15 to 20 minutes for Q&A. So please drop your questions in the chat box and be sure to include your name and city. Just as a update, this class will uh, actually be covering four parties each week. So therefore it will last um, 12 weeks now. Now I'd like to introduce you to our instructor. Surinder Balsing is a researcher in Sikh studies. He works at the Sikh Research Institute, where he develops curriculum, presentations, and research papers on Sikh history and culture. I'm sure you, I'm sure you know him well. Uh, please welcome Surinder Bal. Thank you, Manvinder. All right, so welcome to the fourth week of Nansai course. Today we will cover parties 11 through 14. So let's straight away dive into it. So if you remember the 10th party we covered last week, it discussed you know the idea of Maya and the human propensity to you know act clever. The eleventh party, you know, continues with the idea and further elaborates the point of cleverness and Maya and how it affects us through examples from life. So, if you pay attention on the first line, it says, "A man the the language is very gentle and it's very non-judgmental and it's very intimate and cozy." We will self speak. No, a man piara, oh my beloved mind. It's it's uh, guru is urging. Tu sada sat samale. Always you always please you always sada always such the truth or true one the eternal one remember or observe in your heart. Samale. Always oh my mind. Always keep the divine in your heart your mind in your consciousness if you remember in the you know the first body we discussed this idea of such and how we interpreted with in the context of that it such means in addition to truth the idea of eternality that ekankar is by virtue of being true forever eternal so the line is saying that always remember the akal who is you know eternal in contrast to that, the second line says, e kutamb tujhi dekhda chala nahi tere nale. Uh, e kutamb tujhi dekhda. This family, e kutamb, that you see, particularly referring to mine and your family, families or the relationships that we live in, which you see, which you are so attached to, chala nahi tere nale. Please remember, that it will not go with you or along with you or it will not stand by you in the hour of you know quote unquote judgment uh, that when you are to account for your actions you will be alone you will have to take responsibility of your actions nobody is going to speak for you or help you there uh, if, if it is proving to be a hindrance in developing a love of the divine then it is a case of other love of or maya you know this question has come up multiple times you know so in the in the first session we talked about the law of attraction people asked and then the last session somebody asked how do we treat our children how do we look at our children it's the same idea that you know if it is 
uh, helping you, you know, come closer to the divine. If your family, your friend, friends, your relationship are working as a sangha, which helps you grow and become divine like, then it's great, nothing like that. But if it is not, and it's acting as a distraction and taking you away from your actual love, your origin, then that's problem. Then in that case, remember that this family that you see, that it is not going to go with you or along you. So the idea might be a little harsh, but that's the bitter truth of you know life. So whether it's your parents or your children or your friends, the idea is to always remember how are they helping me, you know, achieve my life goals. Are they helping me or are actually taking me away from or distracting me from what is supposed to be my you know, real purpose in life? And if it is helping you, me, then that's great. The another thing is once we have actually developed, and this is from the perspective of developing an attitude, you know, in relation to the ship, the relationship to the questions that were asked that how do we do how do we treat our family members? That and the answer to that from Gurmit's perspective is that you know once we have actually developed that you know absolute divine love then to us everyone is divine no one is a stranger forget about the family everyone around us those even those who we think are quote unquote strangers even they are not strangers anymore we start to see divine in everyone we develop a sense of love absolute universal love and that's when we by intuitively by virtue of being in that love will know how to handle how to handle our family you know familiar relationships how to you know behave or act or approach our family members including our parents as well as our children all right with that we'll move to the third line saath tera challa nahi is naal kyu chitulaiye saath tera challa nahi something that will not go with you is naal kyu chitulaiye why attach your mind or heart or emotions to something that is not going to work. Then for the focus moves to, you know, avoiding clever means. The next line. It says, Asa kam mule na kicha jit ant pachotai. Asa kam that such a task, such an action, mule na kicha. Do not do from the origin, from the beginning. Basically, do not even do anything for which you have to repent later. So do not even let that an, that idea come into your mind. Because of which you have to, you know, repent in the end. Repent. Now this line also contextualizes the previous line. Uh, in a way, you know, it says that anything you engage with in life, whether, you know, material or relationships, Guru says that the question should be, you know, is it going to bring me closer to a conquer? Or is it going to take me away from a conquer? If ideally speaking from a Gurmat perspective, if that relationship is going to take me away, then we work to transform that relationship into one which becomes my Sangat so that we are helping each other become more divine. Like, you know, Pai Gurdas says, Tarandal you know, every each and every home and house became a taramsal when people were inspired in the love of the divine. Every home became a taramsal. Now, taramsals are gurdwaras for us, so we go to gurdwara. We have to go to gurdwara to seek sangha, but the idea is that we need to make our own homes taramsals as well, where we are constantly in the Sangat of the divine levels. It's so that, you know, our act of doing Sangat and going to Gurdwara doesn't become vocal in nature. We are actually continuously at all the times engaged with the Kaunkar in the Sangat. So basically, make your relationships, your you know, surroundings, your family, that Sangat ideal. So we need to continuously question us, ourselves and see whether uh, that relationship is fitting that well. So the next line. Guru says, in order to achieve that, now try this. Satgur ka updesh sun. Tum ho vay tere naale. Try listening to, you know, the Guru's wisdom and act upon it. Because 
that is the real thing that is going to uh, you know, stay with you and help make everything around you meaningful. Guru's teaching is the real companion in life. Keep keep it close to you. Nanak man pyare Nanak says, Oh beloved mind, tu sada sat samale. Always preserve or remember the eternal truth that is the ikankar in your heart. And that is how uh, you will help, it will help you develop that attitude. So, the message is very clear that, you know, prioritize, you know, you, and focus your life on things that matter things that will help you you know develop yourself things that will or, or only engage with things that will stick around or stick with you or that will be helpful to you which is the guru's sabad guru's instruction that helps uh, you make sense of this word and find you know meaning and purpose in life all right so uh before we actually get into 44 12 uh i would like to discuss a few vocabulary tips here so the next body is going to discuss two uh words dumb and a uh which are listed in the the first column but i would like to discuss a few additional things uh that might help you uh develop techniques to learning vocabulary now this is a very basic way of build, uh, you know building words and vocabulary particularly in punjabi as well as hindustani if you know as uh, hindi so if you notice there are three prefixes listed here uh, a eda a tu and su so generally speaking any word stem you know that has a prefix eda or a it becomes a negation of that word stem uh, this is in in general so it does not uh, mean that you know any word that starts with an ada is a negation of something so in general generally speaking you have to have, you have to have an understanding of the word stem that uh is it actually the entire word or just ada added to a word stem we need to understand that so in this body you will notice that uh, two adjectives have been used for a kalpur one is agam and a gochar both listed in the first column here Gum means to go. So a gum means something or some place that you cannot reach. So a is a negation of going. Something which you cannot, uh, some place where you cannot go. Next word is a gochar. Comes from gochar. Gochar means something, you know, that is perceivable, tangible or perceivable. So a gochar becomes something that is unperceivable. Both have been used as quality of Akalpur saying that Akalpur is both unreachable and unperceivable. So now the other two prefixes are su and ku. They go here together. So while su turns a word into positive or good, ku generally speaking makes it negative or bad. Same goes just like ada. It's not necessary that every word that's starting with ku or su uh works that way so they are just if only if there's who and su is working as a prefix only then uh, uh that happens so you might have heard of word you know listed here karam which means deed as well as you know grace of the divine so if we attach su to it it becomes su karam which means good deed on the other hand if you add ku a prefix to it it becomes ku karam which is bad deed so that's how words are created. Similarly, you have another set of words appearing in Gurbani, Sulakhani and Kulakhani. So Lakhani comes from Lakhan, Lakshan, Sanskrit Lakshan, which basically means characteristics or traits. So when you add Su to it, it becomes, you know, good traits. When you add Ku to it, it becomes bad traits. You know, uh, someone who with bad, bad traits is called Lakhani, one with the good traits is called Sulakhani. So that's how you build vocabulary. Okay, with that, we'll start the next body. The theme in this body is more reflective. The body wonders about the extent of the divine being and the limitations of the 
human faculties in trying to understand it. So the first line goes, Agam agochara tera antana paya. The, plan, the line is pretty straightforward, except for the usage of the adjective, adjectives that we just covered. You know, just take a moment and appreciate how, you know, Gurbani uses different adjectives as divine qualities to address the divine instead of one particular singular name every time. You know, O Agam, O Unreachable, O Agochar, O Unperceivable. Your end has not been known. Nobody is able has been able to understand or know your end or your limit. The second line repeats the idea and emphasizes it. Antona paya kine tera apna aap tu jaan he. Antona paya kine tera. Nobody has been ever able to know your limits. Apna aap tu jaan It's only you yourself. Apna aap tu jaan he. You know, apna aap, your own. Extent is the right word here that you know apna aap, your own self, your own extent, nobody else knows. All the beings that are in the creation are a play that you have set to rule. Who is capable of, you know, describing it or understanding it? Only you know that's the idea. You know, it's supporting the previous idea that nobody is able to understand. Nobody can really tell the extent of the dynamics of the beauty of the largeness of the vastness of this play that you set for. You know, word, there are certain things that cannot really be translated. If you notice in the, you know, wherever this word tata appears, it's, it basically is, you know, emphasizing that it's only, it's only you. Only the idea of this, only you, only. That's something this tata is, you know, you know, conveying. That it's only you, uh, you know, though it seems like the people are trying to uh, or attempting to ex understand your extent. But essentially, it is you who is through them, through their explanations, speaking and seeing things. say speaks, vikha sees. You know, everything is happening through you. You are the one who's actually doing everything because it's essentially you. You manifesting through people, through the creation. Because there is no one else other than you, other than you in this creation. Jini jagtu upaya. Who you who has created this word? You are the one actually who is through everyone operating, seeing, speaking, describing, explaining. Yeah. Nanak says, you are a gum, unreachable. Tera antana paya. No one has been able to know your extent, your limits. You are limitless. That's the idea in pride. So, what is the learning in this body? Uh, the body is saying one that the extent of the divine being cannot be known. What is essential? What that essentially means is that uh, we need to give up our, you know, mental faculties. We don't need to use our mental faculties in trying to understand the divine, because when we do that, we are only frustrated, uh, which is the cause of cause of our, you know, suffering. Gurbani tells us how, you know, people from different faith traditions, they're trying to, you know, intellectually and mentally grasp the nature of or the extent of the divine. And that's a problem because divine is limitless. Our job is not to actually understand the divine. And that's where the problem lies. That's why Guru has beautifully used words like indescribable, you know, in the earlier bodies, the idea came that let's describe, let's speak the story of the indescribable, you know, that kind of an idea that we cannot actually describe or explain or understand the divine. Our job is not to understand the divine. You know, that makes it a, you know, intellectual exercise. The person we love, we feel them. 
we don't you know so, so the idea is that let's develop a relationship that's more emotional in nature instead of just intellectual you know the idea that connects to the very first or uh, body which says that you know sahajepaya the idea that we need to intuitively without pretense connect with the divine uh, in actual genuine love instead of trying to you know just mentally you know or just pay you know lip, lip service instead of actually doing so that's the idea so let's connect and develop a warm intimate relationship that's based on emotions and feelings rather than intellectual you know gymnastics okay next again some more vocabulary so i i feel you know one of the ways of engaging uh in a better way is to cover more vocabulary it helps understand certain ideas plus uh develop a relationship with the language and help us grow. so before we actually cover the next body which is body 13 we'll just see uh, we have two words coming from that body uh word amrit and then there's word tutha uh first first let's discuss tutha tutha comes from tusht which uh, means you know being happy or satisfied uh there is another word listed just below it uh vutha it's not in the body but i've listed that because it's uh quite phonetically close similar to it and sometimes it could be confusing so vutha means something so it means to dwell in the past tense or to rain so vutha is that dwelling or raining and tutha is to be happy tutha is mostly used in the context of the guru or a kalpuruk that when the guru or a kalpuruk becomes tutha or becomes happy then the grace and then a kalpuruk best use grace. so tutha is usually used in that context next week our word amrit now one of the most important words in sikh vocabulary is amrit just like naam and sabad hukam uh, it literally means we just covered this uh, ada prefix plus this word stem. So ada is a negation over uh, here, and mrit means death. So uh, mrit is a uh, is negation. Amrit something that never dies, or one who has the quality of being immortal. Uh, so it of it is often you know referred as nectar in English, and there's another word you would hear. A Greek word ambrosia. These both these words are quite quite often used in the English interpretations of Durbani. So we'll actually encounter them quite often. In the Sanatan tradition, Amrit is referred to as you know the, the drink that Devas, the deities drink, and it's also referred to as Som or Somras many times. The drink is called Somras. It is believed that this drinks you know helps them achieve immortality. But in reality, uh, it actually didn't give the devas any immortality. It only gave them a better understanding. It, it gave them the power of knowledge. If we closely follow the story of Samundra Manthan, the actual story of churning of Amrit within the Sanatan tradition, the way they think the Amrit was created, but whatever that Amrit is, real Amrit, you know, sort of a drink that actually makes people immortal. And there they said that, you know, there's a, some entire story that the ocean of milk sheer sagar was you know you know churned by it when demons and deities came together they churned it with the help of vasuka snake as rope which is around the shiva's neck that snake was used as the rope around the mountain it was called mandar and when they churned that uh, ocean of milk 14 jews came out of it and one of those Jews, one of those 14 Jews was Amrit. Uh, so that's the idea uh, within the Sanatan tradition. Uh, something similar to that can also be found in the Western tradition, what you call the elixir of life. It's also called philosopher's stone, uh, which has the quality of, you know, turning base metals into gold. And it's also said to have the qualities of rejuvenating, you know, life as well as making people, you know, immortal. It's used in that sense as well. But what is relevant to us uh, in Sikhi is that there is no immortality for tangible, real, material things. Everything that exists, uh, you know, will be destroyed one day. In Sikhi, true immortality lies in 
connecting with the akar group the eternal immortal akar group when we connect with eternal you know immortal akar group by virtue of that connection that constant continuous engagement we become what we engage in but we continuously do so we be by engaging with the akar group we become divine life and we ultimately merge or unite with akar group eternal by virtue of merging with the akar group we become become one with the akar group and we also become eternal or immortal that's the idea of amrit vedans so as you notice right here it's listed in a amrit is widely used in gurbani for a host of other things because naam is immortal it's used for naam since bani is a manifestation of amrit uh, it's used for that as well and then it's also used for amrit vela term in sikhi which is which refers to early hours in the morning essentially amrit vela is the last the last quarter of the previous night so that's amrit vela and then amrit is also used for generic generic for other things for sweet milk water and so on and so forth so that's the basic understanding of amrit but that will just uh move into our next pod so in the last couple of body you know bodies with this the course you know basically shifted within the larger domain of finding peace and bliss we started with in the first body uh bani tells us that people are trying different things some are trying to understand the divine or to please the divine as in the previous body and some are uh, and some are basically people have different motivations some are actually genuinely trying to engage some have this you know some are looking for immortality some are looking for a liberation the idea of moksha and some are looking for just bliss and some are there just for the sake of love for being in love so there are different motivations of people and but there are others who are doing these things you know out of love so basically guru gurbani is contextualizing that so the guru says sur nar moni jan amrit khoj de su amrit gurte paya you know that amrit which sur nar monjan god's deities or the humans nar monjan the sages everyone's looking for that elixir of life you know that immortality everyone wants to stay alive you know and but the trick is nobody has really found that amrit that real amrit lies where does it find, where can one find that amrit su amrit that amrit gurte paya that elixir of life can only be found or can be obtained from the master alchemist if i have to say that you know that is the guru just like we you know dissected the two words here amrit is coming from that we just covered that so now there's a re emphasis on this it's like every body paya amrit gur kripa ki ni sachcha mani usai paya amrit when the guru guru kripa ki ni the guru graced paya amrit the amrit was obtained the next line explains what it was like it says sachcha mani usai that the eternal divine being was enshrined in the heart when the guru guru grace that is how one becomes immortal when the satcha comes to abide within our heart when we actually have developed that loving relationship that connection that is how the guru graces us with immortality that's our idea of immortality connecting with the divine so jiye jant sab tud upaye ik vekh pasani aaya ji jant you have created all beings ji jant sab all tud upaye you created ik vekh ik vekh person aaya again we discuss this ik kakke nu sihari there is a uh, sihari short i on kakka so it's people in general this is people plural not one so so i know picking from the previous phrase it says you know among the so many created beings only some serve the guru having received the you know this vision wake some having seen or felt that you know there are people with different motivations but only some have 
that motivation of love who have who after having experienced it or seen it or felt it they were the ones who came uh persona aya persona is to basically approach or to touch something they are the ones who came the idea is that those are the ones who basically imbibe the guru wisdom they engaged with the guru wisdom they came to serve they came to you know sort of you know implement that that's you know the idea of touching implement that wisdom within their life lab lob ankar chuka satguru pala pay lab and lob uh, are synonyms uh, which means greed and chuka means dispelled lost ankar is ego so desire greed and ego were dispelled when when satguru pala paya once the true guru the eternal guru started seeming sweet or pleasing paya means you know light the idea again is of you know real love not superficial love that just pays you know lip service so only when we develop love with the guru and the guru wisdom starts seeming pleasing or sweet to us our perspective changes and things like uh, things that we had earlier liked they are no more pleasing to us the guru's wisdom starts more pleasing to us and that's how we uh, break our attachments to material things and develop our love with the guru and with that breaks our bondage with the source of suffering our love of the material things when that breaks when sadguru pala paya when the guru wisdom starts or seems pleasing to us our love is focused on it and our engagement with the actual sources of pain break and that is how we you know develop that relationship and that experience hai nanak jisno aap to tha but tez nanak those with whom the divine is pleased is jisno jinanu who with whom aap to tha by self or self akal purush by self is pleased tini amrit gurte paya only they have found this amrit of naam uh, from the guru. they receive naam from the guru through the guru wisdom they engage with naam and in this process this will really become divine like and thus merge with the eternal divine and this is how they themselves become immortal okay so what do we learn here immortality is in connection with the immortal divine realizing the divine within and becoming divine like and that is our idea of immortality when there is no there is no immortality in separation there is no immortality in our perception of otherness when we are engaged with maya when we have this idea of otherness in life when we don't see divine in everyone we cannot achieve immortality so in immort- reaching that point of course a lot of uh, you know changes in our life perspective our love and then acting on what the guru says the other major other major thing is that when we serve the guru wisdom and act upon it to eliminate uh, shortcomings in life that's how we you know get rid of uh, things uh, our shortcomings and we become divine like so guru serves or acts the wisdom serves or acts as the medium to help us you know eliminate our shortcomings and that's how we approach or move towards becoming divine okay with that we move to our last body of the session body 14 and this uh, you know the guru gives us a glimpse of you know what are those people like who have made that connection you know whom the guru has graced and who have you know have come person ek vek person aaya who have come and approached the guru wisdom or tried to learn from it and serve it how are those people like and this body is basically describing that bhagta ki chal nirali chal is walk but here it means you know the lifestyle the way of the 
lovers. Lifestyle of the devotees is, Bani says, nirali, distinct, unique. It means that because of you know their love of the divine, their perspective, uh, their word word view, their priorities are different, and they act very differently from the rest of the world. And you know the word that is after you know material possessions and relationships and trying to find you know pleasure from other things. Next next line emphasizes that idea. Chala nirali pagtaha keri bikham margi chalana. Chala nirali pagta keri. The lifestyle of the devotees is unique and distinct. Repetition. Keri, if you notice the fourth word, chala nirali pagta keri. Keri means off. Please remember this word. Uh, I will come back to this after. I will cover some more vocabulary after this body is complete, and that will help us, you know, learn more words. So, become marg chalna. You know, chal nrali pagta kari. The lifestyle of the devotees is unique and distinct, and become marg chalna. They tread a path that is difficult. It is difficult for a person who is in other love, because it is very difficult to, you know, continue to act forever. And be something at that something else that we are not. So if we love material lifestyle, it is not easy to stay away from it, and hence actually developing the perspective of a lover is very difficult. So the next line gives us a pointer to how such people behave. Love lob ahankar chuka. Sorry, love lob ahankar taj trishuna bahut nahi bolna. Basically, those who have actually developed that relationship and you know, have you know moved on that path? What do they do? They renounce love, love, greed, and ahanka, ego, and tajitrishna. They gave up, give up what trishna, craving, anxiety, and of craving of material things. Uh, they don't seek pleasure in things. And then, what do they do? Another important sign of them is they speak very little. They don't speak much. A, they go silent. Since they, you know, they have found bliss within, there is no reason for them to seek amusement or fulfillment or validation from outside world. Uh, they do not engage with the world, but they do engage with the world. Uh, don't get me wrong, but they engage uh, with the world in a detached sense. You know, word rag and bairag appear in the first line. That's how they engage with the word they engage as bairagis who are detached who do fulfill their responsibilities but they do that seeing the divine everyone in everyone but knowing that everything else is everything is either divine but it's uh transient temporary that the, they see the actual divine behind you know things and that's how they engage with the word and that's how they derive their own pleasure so what is it like uh, for people who are not actually on that path, but they want to. So, Guru Sahib give, gives a slight glimpse of that in a very figurative language. It says, Kanyo, you know, actually acting like a lover demands a lot. What is it like, actually? Guru says, Kanyo Tikhi, the path that they take, the lovers take, is actually sharper than a two edged sword. Kanyo Tikha, it's sharp. Sharper than the khanyo. You know, khanyo comes from the word khan. Khan means to, you know, tear. And from there, the word khanda has developed, you know, our Sikh emblem. So khanda has come from that word as well. So khanyo tikhi, it's sharper, you know, walking on that path of love is like walking on a two edged sharp sword. It's like walking on a valo nikki, eight marag jana. Walking on this path, eight marag is like. Valo Nikki going through a way which is finer than a hair. So it's a very figurative language that's telling that it's not easier to break. You know, for instance, you know, we everyone knows, everyone in our life, we sometimes judge other people, but the reality is everyone knows what their shortcomings are, what their weaknesses are. But the problem is breaking that vicious cycle of craving or engaging with our own weaknesses is not easy so it's not it's not good to judge people 
and it's it's actually about you know people you know realizing what's important for them in life and then actually acting on it to actually breaking that vicious cycle it is not easy this is what the guru is alluding to in this line gur prasadi jini aap tajya by the guru's grace those who have surrendered their self that's the idea you know everyone's trying their best people know their limitations but most of the times people think you know that's okay let's spend probably one more time we'll try it from tomorrow you know everyone we make resolutions for weeks months and many years so everyone is aware of that it's just that it's not easy but guru says that those who have by the guru's grace by the grace of by virtue of submitting the guru's wisdom they have given up given up their egos their cravings and their liking for material things jini aap se jiya guru prasad ji jini aap se jiya who have given their self on hari vasana smani what happens when you throw away the jargon from you know your junk from within it's empty that is when by virtue of you know submitting to the guru's wisdom or developing that love what happens hari vasana smani vasana is hopes that our hopes merge with the divine or that we start to hope or love for or long for the divine those who have submitted the guru's wisdom they ultimately develop that love for the divine their vasana smani merges with the divine their love becomes they only crave for or they long for or their hopes merge with the hari so their focus basically changes and their true love becomes है नानक चाल भगता नानक सेज दैट द चाल ऑफ द भगता दैट द वे और द लाइफस्टाइल ऑफ द भगत्स इज यूनिक इट्स लाइफस्टाइल इज डिफरेंट एंड जुगह जुग निराली एंड नो दैट इट हैज बीन यूनिक इन ईच एंड एवरी एज दैट इट हैज बीन यूनिक एंड इट हैज बीन डिस्टिंक्ट सो द आइडिया इज दैट यू नो बाय चाल nirali doesn't mean that you know the pagats go to some sort of a institute to learn the way to catwalk the idea is that again the same idea of you know being intuitive when you are not acting when you are not pretending then you have true love within you that true love guides you you don't have to act or think about it you do things intuitively and that's how a lover becomes distinct unique or separate from their world and they had by virtue of that love that is within their heart because of their vasana having samani having their desires and hopes having merged with the with the, with the divine they develop that love intuitive style which they don't act which happens by virtue of natural art so uh, that's how their style or their lifestyle becomes unique i'll pause for a minute because i'm noticing that there's a lag or there's an interruption in the network all right so what did we learn in this body the body is essentially pointing to the fact that the ways of the devotees are you know always different those who you know uh develop that love it's essentially a, a matter of pleasure everyone's looking for pleasure happiness where do you find that bliss that happiness what is the source of your bliss people look for you know amusement recreation different ways of you know giving pleasure to themselves their minds their bodies their emotions and for that they go out seek a different avenues in the world but the lovers they don't go out to seek that find that pleasure within that that's how they become so different from the world and their lifestyle reflects that uh in contrast to that you know people who are in material engagement they essentially go out to find that pleasure and it's the guru basically who gives you that understanding that wisdom or even liking of uh 
Uh, with that, we finish 4014 as well and all the parties that were supposed to cover this week. But as I had mentioned, uh, we would cover another vocabulary term. So there was a word that appeared in the second line. It's listed here, right in front of you. The fourth word in the second line, Kera. Uh, you know, since many people ask me how to learn Burbani, I tell them that, you know, start with words that are easy to remember and recurring. Once uh, such category of word is, words is the post positions in Gurbani, you know, what we know as prepositions in English. So these are the words that serve as the, you know, the building blocks of any language, which is true for Gurbani as, as well. So knowing them will greatly help you, you know, increase your vocabulary. So basically post position or a preposition is a word that you, that helps you understand or links nouns or pronouns and other phrases with other things within the sentence so words that tell you you know where are the things whether they are above below behind you know in between towards near away those things so those are the things that you know are serve as the basis of you know structures in a sentence so post position is one of that categories and one of the most important ones is possessive form uh, where we learn who owns what, you know, that kind of idea. So you notice there's a whole lot of, there's a hell, you know, list of so many words that appear in Gurbani uh, that basically tells us who possesses what. So you'll notice old Punjabi forms like uh, Handa, Sanda, Sande, Sandi, they all mean, they all mean off. And, you know, some of the forms like uh, Adedi, they are still, you know, prevalent in modern Punjabi. You know, these forms also exist in uh, today's uh, Punjabi. You can relate to that. And then there are other forms like Western dialects of, you know, Punjabi, the Landi. And you will see words like Sandara, Sandade, this Rada, the hard retroflex. Uh, this is typically used uh, in Landi forms. And it's supposed to convey a, a feeling of warmth and, you know, love, a very intimate love. And you will also encounter, you know, forms that are used even now in modern Hindustani, what we know as Hindi. Uska, uski, uske, ka, ke, ki. And then, then there's another set which is not very common uh, because it's coming from Marathi and it's uh, mostly used in Pagut Nam Devji's Bani. Cha, che, chi, cho. Yeah, and all these ones. So these are some of the things you can do to actually develop your vocabulary. And easiest way is to actually find these words from certain pronouns, uh, certain adjectives, like we covered some of them for a Kalpurk, and then these uh, postpositions. They really help you understand in you know, a developing develop understanding of how the structures uh, work in the language. And as you encounter more of them, and as they are recurring, uh, you will develop a familiarity with them and that will help you move further in uh, developing the understanding of the language. Uh, with that, we finish uh, today's session and we'll move on to answering questions if there are any. Awesome, thank you so much for that lovely and enriching class so in their apology um i'm gonna just start with a question that's oh a little more logis logistics based um the question mm -hmm. is please help me understand why we read five forties and then jump to the 40th we don't break any other bonnie and that's from bloomfield let me know if uh, sorry good question uh there are certain things that we do in tradition and is this a part of it uh uh i don't have a direct uh answer to that but there are certain things in tradition that we do and this is a part of that i'm not sure when this exactly started and why we do this uh but that's how it's done if i find an answer to that i'll get back to you lovely uh and our next question comes from ranjit from Surrey, if the divine is unreachable, then how do we connect to the divine? I think we kind of covered this, but perhaps. Uh, yeah, sure. 
So the simple answer that Guru gives is the way to reach the unreachable is to do the katha, the kahani of the akat, the indescribable, by connecting with the na, by connecting, by submit to the Gurbani, by continuously reading that, by developing a love of that, and then acting on it by walking on what the Guru's instructions. That is how we reach the divine. What does that actually mean? Because in our case, divine isn't someone who's sitting up there in the clouds. For Sikhi, everything is divine. Everything is a manifestation of divine. I'm divine, you divine, everyone's divine. So when the when Gurbani says that Amrit is within us, it's just that we are self-willed, we are not focused to it. So when we develop love of the Gurbani, it helps us introspect and look within. That's where the, the unreachable. Akalpurka is unreachable because of our other love, our other love, our, our propensity for other love, material love. Once we develop that love with Gurbani, when we submit to the Guru, Guru, Guru gives us an understanding that we are divine, and then we are able to connect to ourselves. And then we reach out within ourselves and then go out to you know look for pleasures. That is when the unreachable, which is essentially within us, is reached. That's the idea. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Um, the next question is, I am sometimes confused by six who seem to have a deep hunger to understand, in quotation marks, understand the meaning and right path slash method and know a lot, but seem to be lacking that humble love. Is that a trap of the ego? I don't know much, but I have also met those who really express the love, which has a very different feel. And this is from Sukjotkar from Toronto. Uh, Panji, that's very true. It happens. Uh, the point is, uh, we shouldn't start using that an excuse, as an excuse to not engage with Gurbani in the sense to better understand what the Guru is saying, because there's never a complete understanding. There's nothing like complete understanding of Gurbani. Uh, so the more we engage with it, more we will understand, because our understanding is very limited. There is no uh, limit or end to it. So we need to, and we should, in in with integrity understand and continue to understand what the guru is saying but if you look at it uh, dispassionately it's true that majority of the things that guru asks us to do they are very simple so sometimes we use that as an excuse so we need to get rid of that we need to continue to engage with gurbani to continue to you know expand or you know increase our understanding of gurbani but that's true that most of the things that Guru asks us to do that will bring us closer to the Guru, that will help us bring, you know, develop that love within us, they are very simple and they're very, uh, there is no confusion about those things. So, uh, everyone, you know, it's, it's all about motivation. We talk about the idea of motivation as well. Everyone has a different motivation, but let's train our own selves so that we know what our motivation is. and. Guru tells us that our motivation should be to stay humble, get rid of our ego, and submit to the Guru and develop that pure love so that we see the divine in everyone and we may start loving everyone. So I agree with you, but we still need to be cautious and not give up our quest for better understanding of Guru. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very helpful perspective and understanding. Um, yeah, just to be mindful of time, we have time for one or two more questions. Um, our next question, I've kind of clumped two questions together as they're quite similar. Um, but the first one is, is it possible to, to merge with Almighty while you are alive? And that one is from Baljeet Soni. And then the second one that kind of encompasses that as well is, how does one get to the level where the Guru is pleased with us? In other words, how to be in Guru's good graces? And that's from Inder from Long Beach. Beautiful question, Virji. Uh, in fact, that's the very idea. In Gurbani, you know, in other faith, uh, faith traditions, for instance, Sanatan tradition, people seek liberation. They seek heavens after that, thereafter. In fact, in Gurbani, there is no liberation. There is no freedom. There is no merger after that because everything depends on your actions. Either you are divine while you are alive you know, the idea of there's a term Marjivada that appears in Gurbani, Pagti Karahe, 
mar jeevde mar jeevde are those who have killed their who are who are dead while they are alive the idea that who have killed their egos so either you are divine like while you are alive by engaging with the guru if you were not able to, if i was not able to achieve that merger while i was alive there is no merger after that so that's true actually that merger is only possible if, when you are alive there is no merger after that if you weren't to merger if merged with a kalpurk if i am not connected with a kalpurk if i wasn't in love with a kalpurk i'm not going to develop that love after i die so that's the idea of actually in sikhi you are merged when you are alive you are in love while you are alive there is no merger you are liberated you are free you are delivered while you are alive there is no deliverance there is no merger there is no union after that everything is about here and now that's what sikhi believes in uh the second question is how does one get to the level where the guru is pleased with us well it's i think kind of connects with the question that subjot kaur ji asked it's a question of are we trying to act clever or trying to implement simple things understandable things tangible items action items that guru asks us to do it's basically about love if we have developed that love the guru will be pleased if we engage with the guru is basically you continue to engage with things that you love so if you actually have de- developed that love you will continue to engage with gurbani and it's like a circle it feeds each you know it's uh, itself when you are engaged with gurbani guru will be pleased with you so there is no other way other than you know reading gurbani continuously developing an understanding of it and then walking on it and it's a continuous cycle if you are doing that that's a sign of guru being pleased with you there being grace on you that's my understanding lovely i think it was a very fruitful question and answer period uh, i thank you sundarpal singh uh, for you. taking time to both engage with us as an audience and to answer these questions and thank you all uh, to these our loyal attendees thank you for all of your questions and apologies to those questions that were not addressed due to time constraints please note that a recording of this live class will be available within 24 hours and please tune in for next week for the fifth class in this live course series we are also uh, hosting bi-weekly live webinars our next live webinar 1984 the devoted and the worldly we will be joined by her and their singh to answer questions such as why was the shri harmandar saib and akal tak sahib complex complex attacked what is the sick historical context and how must the memory be kept alive 36 years on and lastly don't forget to tune in to the sick cast a podcast produced by sickri where we explore the various issues and events affecting six worldwide thank you for joining in today's live class will be ending now vaigruji ka kalsa vaigruji ki fate vaigruji ki fate